Hey guys, and welcome along to this abs workout with myself. My name's Dave Cross, and I'm the group exercise program manager and master trainer for Pure Gym. So we've got 20 minutes, all floor-based with no equipment. You'll just notice that I've got a bottle of water and a towel, because, well, you know how I get. <laughs> now, hopefully you fit well and ready to do this. You need a little bit of space. It's not too dynamic, but you will need some space, of course, to lie down on your front, on your side, and on your back. So make sure you've got something comfortable on the ground. We're going to get started straight away with the warm-up. So let's make sure we do the usual. <laughs> Start your activity track as if you've got one. I'll crank up the music a little bit, and we can get warm. That's wrong. So come on to your back. Let's get started. Feet on the floor, and it's just a nice, simple crunch. Two-two. Up, up, down, and down. So it's a nice fluid controlled start. So a few things you need to think about with the crunch and you'll stay here for a little while. The elbows are gonna be out wide. So as you look, you can't see the elbows. The chin is lightly tucked in and you're rolling the rib cage really close and compacting it in toward the hips. Four more. And as you crunch, breathe out and try to look through the knees. Twice more. The upper back rolls away from the ground. Same thing, double time, single. Up, down, up, down, there you go. Chin lightly tucked. Awesome, all right, arms rest on the floor, double knee lift, bring them up, up, down, and down. So just a light little tap on the floor with the heels. But again, you're gonna stay here for a little while whilst we just prepare our lower abdominals. So as you're moving, you're hinging at the hips. So you're locking the knees at 90 degrees. So as you move the feet further away from the body, you'll notice that the lower abs will start to bite a little harder. Do that four more times, but listen carefully. As you lower the legs, Brace the abs a little harder so the lower back doesn't really lift away from the floor anymore. One more time. Listen, hold the knees up, hold. One leg extends out slow. Out, out, in, and switch. So we're taking just a little extension from the hip, but bracing the abs again super tight as the leg extends out. Four more. So you'll see a little bit of this to come. But for now, just stay nice and steady. One more. All right, yeah, you guessed it. Single time, quick, out and in. Now what I find helps me feel really strong with this move is if I can squeeze my thighs at the end of the move. So point the toes and give it a good little pinch. Four more, four. Three, twice more. Yeah, those hip flexors are starting to burn now too, aren't they? <laughs> Feet down, crunch, two, two. So nice and simple, nice and steady. Now, because we've only got 20 minutes, I don't want to keep you in the warm up for too much longer. So just bring it to a C crunch now. The knees come up as you crunch up. And lower and tap the feet. So we're already a few minutes in, and I'd love it if we can start getting our training on right now. So hold there, relax, and roll over onto your front. Should we begin? Yeah, why not? Why not? So we're gonna get straight into a hover position. So you're gonna come down to the ground and just settle all the way to the floor. As our usual setup goes for a hover, so you're gonna be on your elbows. The elbows need to be directly under your shoulders, as we always do. That allows you to push firmly through the forearm into the floor. Now, as you're doing this, you're gonna push out away from the ground with your chest. You'll brace your abs. For now, the toes are resting on the floor, but your knees are gonna stay in contact with the ground just whilst we prepare for this. So when you're ready, brace abs and lift your hips up. Now that your hips are up, they should be as high as your shoulders. So if you're sort of posting a little too far from your forearms, your hips might be a little too high. So drive the shoulders forward and stay there. Now I know there's a lot of strong ones that are watching this. So if you're feeling up for it, dig the toes and lift the knees. 
hold there. A little tuck under of the tailbone, and your back wants to be really long and straight. Hold, super strong, hold. Lifting, alternating heel. Lift and touch, switch, lift and touch. Now in my abs classes, I tend to work on hovers quite a lot. Hovers and plank sequences. Why? Because it's not just a crunch that's gonna help you toward that toned core. We've got to focus on getting the deep core muscles really strong too. This is gonna help you get strong with other movements, squats, bench presses, even functional day-to-day -day moves. Hold, knees down. Hold there. Another five seconds, then you'll get a little sit back. And then we're gonna get into the swing of things even further. Hands to the floor, little sit back. Now, that's the first sequence of your hover. Now we're gonna integrate some more oblique work into that hover movement. So bear with it. Bear with it. All right, straight back to the hover. Marks, set, go, lift. Now as you're staying there, at any point you need to, so what makes you need to is if your shoulders start to give way or if your lower back starts to dip, then just pop the knees on the floor. But we're gonna move to this, it's a side climber. So the knee winds round wide to the side. And I'd love it if you can start now. Out and back, out and back. And of course, you can do this whilst the opposite knee stays on the ground. Eight. Seven, keep going. So you're pushing firmly into the floor, squeeze your chest tight, bracing your abs, but as the knee circles round, you're gonna get a little pinch through the rib cage. Two more each side. One more time. Hold, freeze. 10 seconds and we'll touch down and we'll move on to the next move. Hold there, hold there, brace. Four, three, two, and one. Well done. Whew. All right, so a hover movement, as you'll notice, it starts to really fire up all the muscles and you can probably feel it all the way across your body, across the front of the body. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna complement that, complement or supplement, Either way, it's still gonna work by bringing in a lot more challenge for the lower abdominals. So the lower abs would have been controlling that hover now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and almost fatigue the lower abs to make the next movement a little more challenging. Got it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, arms on the floor for now. Raise your knees up. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna extend your legs to 45 degrees, both at the same time. We go out, out, in, in. Now as you shoot the legs straight, you'll notice that the further your feet go away, the more your lower back tries to lift away from the floor. So we brace really hard to stop that from happening. If the lower back continues to lift, then extend one leg at a time. Or you can keep a bend in the knees and tap the heels to the floor. You got four more. All right, there's something a little juicy coming your way. Two more. But listen, this last one, stop. Hold out, hold out. Now if your lower back can stay pinned toward the floor and you can lower your legs, go for it. You'll start shaking. That's a good thing. If you started to shake already, aim your feet a little higher so you can stay in that movement for longer. Stay there. Uh, eight, seven, six, five. Bend the knees, touch down, recover. Good. Whew. All right, let's do that again. So you've got a good 10 seconds or so to recover. Trying to plant the arms into the floor, but without putting resistance into the floor. All right, next few seconds, let's set things up. So raise the knees again. Now, what was your best option? So basically what that means is what option did you do to give you the best result? To keep that lower back pinned toward the floor, you may be hitting a single leg, but let's try the out for two. Out, out, 
in, in. To give you a little bit of, I don't know, release, so to speak, when the knees come back in, you could almost bring them a little closer to your chest so that that tailbone can lift. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they're starting to bite now. <sighs> Hold, freeze, freeze, freeze. Stay there for eight, seven, six, oh. four, three, two, hug the knees, roll up. Oh man, yeah, that worked, that worked. Get a little sip. So again, great work for the lower abdominals. Now we're going back onto our front. Take a little sip. We're already 10 minutes in. Okay, so going from the hover position, we're now going to post out of the hands. So we're into a full plank. Some of you might find this plank position a little more comfortable. Don't ask me why. <laughs> now the hands need to be directly under the shoulders, the same rules as the elbows when we're in the hover. Now I like to set things up a little differently for this in terms of trying to corkscrew the elbows in to try and get my chest to squeeze and my mid and upper back to try and find great alignment. So do the same if you can. Elbows screw in, and then you can be on your knees as you walk the knees back. The hips come in line, so this time the hips are not as high as the shoulders. They're a little lower because our body has changed the angle. So let's stay here. I'm gonna give you a little tip. Take your knees just a touch wider. Yeah, and this is why. You're holding on really strong, one hand at a time, posting the floor, and we reach up, up, down, down, switch. So it's a slow shoulder tap. Now you're joining me with this, but as you're doing this, try and pay particular attention to what's happening in the deep core muscles and your obliques. So the moment one hand comes off the floor, you're having to push harder into the floor with your opposite knee which means that every muscle that's attaching arm to leg is firing up really well. Now we're gonna stay doing this, but if you can, yeah, you guessed it, to the toes. Real slow and steady. I'm not gonna say slow and steady wins the race, but the longer we stay in a movement pattern like this, the stronger we're going to become. Two more. Good. Touch down. Hold. A little sit back and rest. How was that? Lots of time under tension, right? Whew. All right. We're going to try something similar, but there's a slight difference to our speed. So watch this. We're going to tap, 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 tap and go slowly on one arm. Try it now. Go. Four, three, two, one, slowly. And then alternate hands. Four, three, two, one, and draw across. So if it's left, right, left, right, slowly left. Then it goes right, left, right, left, slowly right. Same rules can happen on your knees. Twice more. Last one. Ah, well done. Lower your body down. Oh. Okay, we are almost quarter past. What a good start. What a really good start. So we've only got just over five minutes left of work. Whew. Hopefully your heart rate's up, you're breathing a little faster. Sweat's coming. Yeah, a little towel down, why not? Whew. Okay, now we're back on our front again, but this time rather than forcing the upper body away from the floor, we're actually going to work our posterior muscles. So our upper, mid, lower back, and our glutes. 
So lie yourself all the way down to the floor. So this movement's got almost like two parts to it. So challenge number one will be to have your legs lifting within the movement. So to lift your legs, might sound quite obvious, but straighten your legs if you can, squeeze your glutes, and you've got to try and get your thighs off the floor. It's not worth just bending the knees. We've got to lift the thighs off the ground. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, we're going to reach the elbows back, so we're squeezing the shoulder blades together. And we're going to reach the arms. Then as we come back, that's when everything lifts. So we lower and reach. Then we lift and pull back. Got it? So let's start. Arms forwards, elbow squeeze and lift the feet. In, in, out, out. Now on the way out, if you need some little extra support, the toes and the fingertips can touch the floor. Something that you might be doing regularly is looking. If you've got me on your TV screen, you might be looking up right now. But I need you to do something for me. Keep going. Trust that you're doing it well, but keep your eyes down toward the floor so that you keep your chin tucked in and your spine long. So you're bringing the elbows into your ribs and then reaching your arms forwards. I'd like you to do another eight. Lift your feet and your chest higher. Ah. And I'm keeping your eyes down so you can't see me rest. <laughs> Just jokes. Just jokes. Four more times. Up you get. Up you get. Now this movement's great to strengthen your lower and your mid back and to give those glutes that little extra squeeze that they deserve. <laughs> ah, hold there, rest. Whew. Good, how is that? Sometimes, and I think I actually find those movements the most challenging. Why? Because I do them least often. So I need to do them more so that I can become stronger in those movements. So maybe you're the same, who knows? All right, so for now, we're going back into the hover. But now, rather than sort of relying on us staying into a, a sort of a single arm approach and finding our balance, we're actually going to rotate to bring in the obliques. So we've got another, let's say, three or four minutes of work left. Forearms push into the floor. You're going to come straight up to the hover now and brace, but you're going to rotate hips side to side. Go. And I'm going to let you do this in your own speed, your own tempo. But take a look at my feet if you can. I'm rolling the feet from side to side so that when my hips land onto one side, I'm actually working my obliques to try and wind back over. So this twist through the ribs, main twist is through the hips. So your thighs rotate, your shins rotate, and your feet do. Ah, you're almost there. You're almost there. You've got a 15 second rest coming in four, three, two, touchdown rest. Ooh. <laughs> so the twist a little bit takes your mind off of the hover movement itself because all you're trying to do is either coordinate the rotation or you're just trying to hang in there without stopping onto the floor. Let's try that once more and we're going to move on to one of our final exercises. Push through the ground, dig the toes, lift away from the floor, elbows under shoulders, dig the toes, and let's go for a little spin, shall we? Go. Let's not rush this. Let's move really well as you twist. But don't let anything else touch the floor. Ah. 10 seconds, six seconds, last one, and time, ah, good, all right, you'll be pleased to know there's now very little left to work within your shoulders, so many times we get messages about strengthening the upper body, 
doing these sort of core exercises and strengthening exercises are fantastic to help you do that. So come on to your back. One of our last moves is a good old fashioned rope climb. So not quite directly above your face, but actually almost directly above your belly button, there's a rope dangling. And every time you pull it, it gets closer to you. And that's what you're gonna try and do now. So one arm at a time, just check it out. Reach and pull, reach and pull. So at any time, you can drop the shoulder back down to the floor, but we're gonna try and twist through the torso to get the middle of the chest rotating. Mark, set, go. Now the purpose of this, <laughs> the rope climb itself, you can see my hand opening and closing, that adds no benefit to your core. But it, <laughs> but it helps you sort of almost visualize what it is that you're supposed to be trying to do. So you're reaching and pulling. But this time, try to go for a really big reach. So you're getting more of your upper back away from the floor and you're not using the opposite arm to lift higher. Nah, you're gonna keep that off the ground. And you've still kept going, haven't you? Yeah, you have. Four, three, two, one. Good, hold there. Suck in some air. We're good to go once more. We're good to go once more. Ooh, 21 minutes since I've pressed my stopwatch. Let's do one more set, then we're good to go. Reach, go. Now get higher, get higher. That dangling rope just got three inches further away. So what have you got to do? Not without throwing, you've got to reach further. Go. There you go. There you go. Slide the ribs to the hips. Ah. Ah. And time. Good. Well done. A good little burnout. And you know what? Whilst we're just closing the workout, if you want to do another set, crack on. If you want to rewind this whole thing, once it's uploaded properly, you can do that, of course. But for now, come back up over onto your front. Let's take a little release. That was a great little session. That 20 minutes in the bag. Lift your chest. Whew. All right, maybe 22 minutes, but don't say we don't give you anything. <laughs> so that workout, again, hit all heads of the core, all directions. We've got some simple crunches in there. We've got some transverse deep core work. Yeah, ticked a few boxes, that. So similar workouts to that are all available on the Pure Gym app, all accessible, absolutely free if you want to crack on and do some more work. But from myself, Dave, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this session. Stay strong and we'll see you for the next one. Cheers, guys.